I just want to highlight some areas of research that people have been doing. I think um, this is more driven by headlines than anything. I think you ought to be more interested in the LIGO than anything else, at least at the moment, just because of the news. Um, anyone here know what LIGO stands for? L-I-G-O, Javier? What does it do? It detects gravitational waves. Yeah. No it looks for gravitational wave, and it does it does it by light interferometry. Uh, that I think light interferometric gravitational observatory. I think that's what it stands for. Let's go to their website, lio.org. I was looking at what I should show here. So it stands for. What's it? No, it's not telling you what LIGO stands for. Maybe about. LIGO stands for uh, Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. So gravitational wave part, that part is relativity, general relativity, astrophysics, whatever. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to show you was the instrumentation that's uh, based on this. It's, uh, this is how they measure the, um, I guess, contraction and um, kind of so what gravitational wave is, is a contraction and expansion of the space-time itself. And it's a, a very minute amount. You need a very sensitive way to detect it. The whole you know, rulers that we are talking about in special relativity, that's a cartoonic example. You don't actually measure <laughs> effects that way. And uh, one of these videos here talks about the work, how the laser interferometer detects gravitational wave. Uh, so let me play this, it's only three minutes. And i hoping as you watch it, some of it will kind of sound similar to something we've been talking about in the semester. So. I'm gonna to try to show you how an interferometer actually detects gravitational waves. If they are propagating or if they're heading in the direction of this blackboard, uh, they will do along the, let's call this the x-axis, they will stretch the x-axis, and space-time in the y-axis will shrink. And a little bit later, do the opposite. And we're gonna exploit that property of gravitational waves, that's called the polarization of the wave, in this device, which we call the interferometer. It sends out a light beam, and the very first thing it encounters is a beam splitter. It's a device that transmits light, about half the light that hits it, and also reflects light, about half the light that hits it. This beam got reflected from here, went up, in, got reflected inside this jazzy mirror, which is this corner, and comes down to here, and here it gets reflected back to the source. But another thing that happens to it is it gets transmitted as well, so it comes down like that. But there's an also a line that comes this way. Light hits this thing and also gets reflected. They both get reflected together. And it's come to a photodetector. Here is the photodetector. And remember what happens with light waves. When they propagate, let's say in this direction, they have electric fields that go up and down. They wiggle with the light wave as a wave. This is negative electric fields. That's a positive electric field. That means the electric field points up. Here the electric field points down, that's all. And the amplitude of this is the size of the electric field. You imagine this whole pattern zipping along to the beam splitter and then zipping up to this mirror and then zipping down and hitting the photodetector. It's the same thing happening along here. That entire pattern moves along, moves up, comes back to the beam splitter and goes down to the photodetector. But this time, it's reflected by the beam splitter that flips this whole thing over, just flips it over. If you have set the thing up properly, maybe this path length is the same as that path length, you can make it so that the photodetector doesn't see any light whatsoever. Now, let's put in the fact that the gravitational wave comes along and stretches one side and shrinks the other. When I add these two, this one and that one, I don't get zeros anymore. Now, there is light hitting the photodetector, and that is the basic idea. A gravitational wave comes along. It destroys that, 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 that difference between the two paths, so that we no longer have just zero light, we get light. And so we have converted the gravitational wave into amount, an amount of light that appears at the photodetector. And that is the fundamental idea behind the measurement. So hopefully this reminds you of Michelson Morley experiment, right? And that's, a, that's the exact setup at the very basic level. 
And now, what, because this is aimed more at general audience, uh, what it's not describing is how, um, how stable the lasers must be. And uh, keeping lasers stable so that that interferometric pattern um, remains stable, and they have enough sensitivity to, 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 to you know, detect the things that they detected. And somebody got Nobel Prize for in 2017. <laughs> um, so that's where AMO physics comes in. It's, uh, so, um, so it's so the lasers that are used in this uh, large scale um, experiment. Um, now, I guess as far as um, people who are actual, so this is a more of a kind of application of AMO physics. It's um, the gravitational wave, that's more now astrophysics. Uh, I guess, uh, yeah, astrophysics. 